how do I remediate or fix soil that has these heavy metals or these toxic elements? And, and out of curiosity, just if we zoom up to maybe the industrial, the urban construction level, I'm, I'm assuming that sometimes this will happen in a construction project and they'll have to remediate that soil somehow. How do they do it in, in large scale? Maybe then we get to the smaller uh, backyard gardener. Yeah, so in a nutshell, there are ex situ and in situ remediation uh, mechanisms and ex situ are very expensive. And when they have to do it outside somewhere, they take the soil, it, like in the construction site that you describe, or maybe it's an old factory or maybe it's a brownfield. They have to excavate the soil and bring it to facility and go through different treatments. There are multiple ways how it can be done. There's soil washing, they may go into different temperature regimes. It depends what kind of contamination it is, of course. They may go to some sterilization. There are so many varieties of um, choices these days, but it's super expensive. And it's why scientists um, came up with the ideas how to change uh, soil property and heavy metal contamination to make it less um, harmful to humans through in situ uh, application mm. of uh, soil amendments. So technically we don't okay. have to go and uh, take this, excavate the soil and bring it somewhere and use other resources like electricity and water to clean it, but rather use some uh, organic waste or maybe inorganic uh, fertilizers like phosphorus uh, to chemically change metals in the soil where they are to make them less harmful to people. Just to define terms for those who don't know, ex situ would be outside of the situation or, or outside of the environment you're trying to. So in those cases, why it's so expensive is because you're quite literally hauling the soil away to treat it with a variety of those methods that you described exactly. and then bringing it back and replacing it. And that would be, of course, crazy expensive because it's so heavy and uh, just the, the process must be crazy. OK, so we, we see how we do it, perhaps at a, at a larger scale, I would imagine Ex, ex situ or outside would be not feasible for the home gardener. So we're talking about in situ stuff or on property. What could I do? Let's say if I have, I don't know, a hundred square foot area in my backyard that, that is contaminated, but I still want to garden in it. What's my best option? So definitely the best option would do compost or mulch, some sort of organic amendment. There are other options like using fertilizers with uh, enriching phosphorus that scientists also found to be um, effective in uh, remediating lead, but it may be a little bit too complicated for an average gardener to figure out the amounts they need to add to make it uh, efficient. So the easiest way is to take a compost, maybe it's from your local facility that give you compost for free maybe you buy it uh, and then you either uh, mix it in with your topsoil or maybe you cover it on top to create a blanket and over time you will build up new layers by just bringing new uh, soil or new um, compost uh, mm -hmm. there are other ways how you can do it uh, if you grow raised bed and you know soil is contaminated you don't want to plant anything in that soil, you uh, put a landscape fabric underneath, you build a raised bed uh, tall enough for your vegetables, wherever you grow, to grow in that raised bed because like tomatoes, they have a lawn uh, root system. So you would need something that's taller versus like leafy greens. So consider the height of your um, raised bed um, based on what you want to grow in it. And then you bring a new soil with a clean compost into your raised bed. So that would be an option too. But if you just want to have planting in your backyard with no raised beds, uh, adding compost and mulch in surrounding areas where you walk, like your path walk, uh, you don't garden, it would be a great idea. Not only organic matter creates the barrier, but also it... Uh, when it breaks down, it releases nutrients to the soil, it feeds microorganisms, it holds down more water, it uh, has more aeration. Uh, it really creates this uh, favorable condition for microorganisms to grow, for vegetables to grow in, and it uh, combines uh, with the metals. So it forms organomineral complexes, and this oh, makes it wow. less harmful to people. That's why we want to um, have this effect in the soil with compost. Sure. So it sort of binds to the heavy metals and uh, transforms them into a compound that's just less harmful overall. Exactly. So this is, huh. I think it's important to introduce a new term for your listeners is bioavailability. Sure. 
And bioavailability means, uh, in terms of like in our conversation, is how much of the metal can be uh, uptaken by you know, organisms, of humans, animals, or plants, and uh, it become toxic. So even if we measure high concentrations of metals in the soil, most likely labs are going to measure total concentrations, uh, and it will take in into account all possible chemical forms of lead or arsenic or chromium, but not all metals, not all total concentrations are harmful. It's really only the fraction that is um, bioavailable, meaning mm -hmm. it exists in a chemical form. It can easily uh, dissolve in the bloodstream in the human and t can be taken up by bones or by brain cells, but not uh, all metals um, in that form. So mm -hmm. when we add organic matter, we actually create uh, of non-bioavailable fractions. So metals are still there, but because they're bound to organic matter, they're not going to uh, be consumed or at least it's a sure. small amount by children. It's, it's almost human. as if they're, they're not there in, in the sense of can they be absorbed? Uh, right. So the compound yeah. is present, but 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 nothing's happening to the compound. So the question, I guess, a question I have as a follow up is: Let's say they're not bound. Let's just say that it's unremediated soil with some sort of heavy metal or toxic element in it, and you're growing edible crops in there. How much of those heavy metals can be taken up by a plant? I'm sure it's not as simple as that question. It's, it depends on you know the compound, or it depends on. I suppose, um, the, the element itself, but I am curious, you know, there's a lot of gardeners out there who say, or, or wonder like, I'm, oh, I'm growing in a metal bed. Is that, is that safe? I'm growing in a wooden bed. Is that safe? Or uh, all these compounds, they, they sort of wonder how does it actually get into the plant? And thus, if I eat it, get into me. That's an excellent question. So, uh, metals can come from different sources we talked about it but then how do they get to human body and there are three different pathways one through plants if you eat potentially contaminated plant it can get to human body uh, it's through ingestion or inhalation in very rare cases it can be dermal contact but it's mostly for occupation hazards and also leaching to groundwater and then we drink this groundwater so the main pathway for exposure is through ingestion uh, or through dust, uh, like house dust. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. really important for kids uh, when because they're more vulnerable, they're less, their immune system is not as strong as for adult. So they're more susceptible to contamination. So when they ingest their soil particles by playing in the ground, uh, it gets into their bloodstream. In terms of a plant contamination, uh, but the, it plants may or may not uptake toxins from the soil. It depends on what the plant is. Uh, so physiology of a plant is different. Uh, and also how tall they are, like tomatoes, eggplants, um, like squash, something grows further from the soil surface and the more of like a fruity vegetables, they have uh, strong physiological barriers inside of their roots and stems to prevent contamination going to the fruits or vegetables, but also they don't get splashes from surrounding areas. Mm. While leafy greens can uh, uh, get splashes from surrounding areas because they're so short, and this dust uh, or um, splashes can contain particles of soil with lead, arsenic, cadmium. Okay. That's very hard to wash off. So you wash it. So it doesn't reduces. even. Yeah, well, I thought that's. I didn't even think about the fact that it doesn't necessarily have to be taken in by the plant's tissue. It could just be on the plant via the groundwater or or, or soil splashing. Yeah, so absolutely, it's important to wash your vegetables, but consider that it might not completely be washed off because it's such a strong adhere. Ad adhesion or adherence on the surface of a leaf, especially if it's like hairy mm. herbs, they just capture it. Ah, uh, wow, yeah. And they hold like on. Like borage or, um, you know, s certain types of sage or things like that. It, it's yes. one drop of water, it's hard, it's hard to get it off. Okay, interesting. Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.